Hey everybody! Welcome to Screenwriting Tips. My name is Tony D and today we're going to talk about how to do a TV show Bible. Technically not screenwriting but it's script writing so we're in the ballpark. Okay so I've done this a few times uh, mostly for people who are pretty far outside the industry uh, you know mostly for amateurs who wanted something to present to a producer and mostly for myself so is there any real set way to do it uh, it's kind of tough to say it's all about you know what the producer wants um, if in fact he is your producer and you're writing it for him or if you're trying to write something to present to a production company to potentially shoot or you're presenting it to a studio now it's unlikely you're going to present anything to a studio uh, unless you're tied into you know a famous actor or comedian who already has a deal and they're just trying to you know pull something together in which case it's basically done <laughs> um, the deal is done it's just a matter of getting something that people in the studio will approve which is more trial and error because the people you're dealing with may or may not be professional about it they may just be essentially money people with their own particular taste and they may impose them on you or they may just say yeah whatever you got great good I mean that's usually what you want you want the money people just to get out of the way so you could do your job it's more likely you may have a client who wants to pitch a TV show or you may be working with somebody or, or want to talk to somebody who may make the pilot in which case you're dealing with people who are going to look at the show Bible from a very practical standpoint they're not going to look at it like a studio would a studio is going to look at it as well can we make this show does it fit into our lineup does do we have the right people for it producers and showrunners they're gonna look at it like well can we make this pilot on the cheap and uh, you know they're probably not gonna look past the first show uh, very far until they have a pilot ready and then you know uh, what they're looking for essentially is a strong pilot with potential for further episodes so obviously there are a few things you have to stay away from obviously the characters can't all die uh, <laughs> unless the premise you know the premise of the show I don't know it takes place in heaven or whatever um, if you look at the pilot for it's always sunny in Philadelphia I think that's a good example of a very low budget pilot you can probably see that on YouTube somewhere guys just shot it in their apartments and backyards and stuff and uh, use their friends and they had to, you know themselves as the main actors they didn't have uh, they had a they originally had a different D and then she left uh, and now yeah I think the original pilot that they ended up showing around was just the three of them the three uh, main guys so um, and they ended up I think redoing that uh, pilot plot or subplot in one of the other episodes which is something that ends up happening because you know if you write a halfway decent pilot at least enough to show it you want to eventually go back and use that material if you got some you know good material out of it but what you're looking to do in a show Bible is you have to outline um, the show the premise of the show you're gonna need a pitch for it a one sentence pitch uh, you're gonna need all the characters the main characters if it's a sitcom you're gonna need the main locations uh, that's very important so in it's always sunny in Philadelphia it's the bar it's Charlie's apartment um, maybe Dennis's apartment or Dee's apartment a couple other places but not a whole lot uh, in sitcoms it's very important to keep the locations to a minimum you want about three at most and if you can have a nice public space like a bar then you can uh, you know a lot of times in the episodes a lot of the action takes place in the bar uh, it may take place in different parts of the bar but you know they shoot most of it in the bar 
maybe they go into the basement once in a while uh, or maybe they go right outside the bar but almost all the action takes place around the bar and um, and that makes sense in the context of it's always sunny in Philadelphia because that's what it's about it's about four people who own a bar and their wacky adventures and and Frank so um, you want to outline the characters the look the main main locations that you're going to use time and time again obviously Charlie's apartment not is not in every episode Dee's apartment's not in every episode Dennis's apartment Dennis and uh, Max apartments not in every episode but you want to generally outline it sometimes they go to the mother's place uh, Charlie's mom's house for a while they were going to Max mom's house and then they moved in together and that was a whole episode so um, you don't have to go that far down uh, generally in the Bible I would say stick with the main characters the pilot and the first season and maybe a few suggestions for accompanying seasons depending on the show so if you have a show like Law and Order SVU uh, it's not you know every season's not gonna have a theme right I mean it's basically the same show all the time so you don't really have to get into well in season one it's this and then season two it's that it's not a show you need to pitch that way because it's mainly about each individual episode and they're going to be very different because they're about police cases and it's kind of a serious show so themes don't really work whereas in it's always sunny in Philadelphia um, or shows like that you can have themes in Curb Your Enthusiasm you can have themes or where you know things change you know and in Curb Your Enthusiasm Larry eventually gets divorced and so it's uh, you know first you had married Larry and then you have single Larry and then he then Larry with his roommate uh, JB Smooth um, so you you can outline a few things like that you don't want to get too specific in the in the season arcs um, you know it's all it's all something you want to indicate to the producers that you have ideas that you want to take the show in hopefully bold directions that are going to be fun and going to be interesting um, I've written a lot of these on spec my friend who was a, an exec at Disney we we put together a, a pitch for a, a show. It was a one hour, I guess you'd call it a drama, but it had more elements than just drama. It wasn't like a soap opera. It was a pretty interesting show. And then we did the first pilot script, which I think writing the pilot really helps you flesh out the characters. We fleshed out the main characters. Uh, and then we did basically just pitches for the rest of the season or at least, I don't know, at least like five or six episodes. And then we pitched a, maybe like suggestions what would happen in future seasons. Again, you know, you only want to get so specific because different things could happen. If you look at a show like The Sopranos, you have one of the lead actresses die and they had to change the direction of the show. They had to. Um, which was a shame because I really think the dynamic on The Sopranos between uh, Tony Soprano and his mother was the show. And when that actress died, who was amazing, I forget her name, uh, I think the show really died with it. After that, it wasn't the same. And, uh, you know, I really felt the show really lost something without her, unfortunately. Although I think the cast was great. I, I My slide of not watching that show began the moment the moment that actress was gone so that can happen so you don't want to get too crazy and you know producers are going to make changes just like anything else so you don't want to get too invested in like season five of your TV show you things can happen uh, in in Archer George Coe who does the voice of Woodhouse passed away and uh, you know it was tragic and you know again he was a he wasn't probably wasn't as integral to the show as the mother on the sopranos was but he was up there he is definitely missed on the later episodes i really wish george carl uh i wish he could have stuck around for the rest of the seasons man he was just great um the interaction between archer and his butler was just 
amazing. Um, and, you know, in that kind of show, they may replace the actor if they pass on. It's a hard call. I mean, they probably could have done it with George Coe because they did have another actor do some of Woodhouse's voice. So, but, you know, I understand why they, they wouldn't. Uh, and they were changing the show anyway, so... So, um, you know, in general, what you want is an outline, just like anything else. Uh, you want to map out how the show's going to run, what the dynamic of the show is. You know, uh, for, for a show like The Walking Dead, you know, the dynamic's pretty clear. It's, it's the, the survivors versus the zombies, but then versus other survivors. And the survive, other survivors are worse than the zombies sometimes. And that's basically the premise of the show, and that's what they try to explore uh, during the course of that. If you create a show like this and it gets bought and paid for, God bless you, you're in for a ton of money. Um, I don't know how much creative satisfaction you'll get. It'll kind of depend on whether or not you're on the writing staff or whether or not they just sort of buy you out and uh, send you on your merry way. But either way, those checks will keep coming. If you're that fortunate, and uh, I hope you are, <laughs> um, you know, these days television is changing. Netflix uh, has changed the game. YouTube has definitely changed the game. People are doing their own TV shows. And so there's not as much money in TV as there once was. Um, I said to a friend a long time ago, back when YouTube was new, I said, everybody's going to have their own TV channel. And basically that's come to pass. And just like when you know, the money went out of radio, the money's going out of TV. So, you know, be prepared <laughs> to uh, make a lot of compromises if you want to get your TV show made. And I would keep your, you know, uh, I would keep your budget very low, you know? Don't go crazy with a lot of effects or anything like that. You know, if you're gonna produce it yourself and make it yourself, that's a different story, but, you know, try to keep things simple just to get it across. I mean, you want a really solid pilot episode, but again, just look at that, that uh, It's Always Sunny pilot. It's a very good pilot, it's very funny, and it's very much like the show that they, they have now. And uh, it didn't require a lot of stuff. They still do episodes that don't require, you know, a ton of locations or money or anything like that. Um, they, they tend to have more locations now and more outside locations, which really makes the show feel bigger. But, uh, you know, don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Because, you know, it's very expensive to produce a TV show and it's very hard to get a TV show made. I mean, it's just impossible. There's just too much money. There's just too many people involved. Um, you know, it's the stakes are in a lot of ways higher than a movie. A movie's kind of like a one-shot deal. Even if it sucks, they can make money uh, on, a, on a bad TV show or a movie. It can't be the same for a TV show. TV shows that are bad, it, they're kind of lost leaders. Um, you know, they, they don't make, they got to get sponsors, you know. Movies don't need sponsors. They make money. People buy movies unseen. They can make, you know, even crappy movies get sold. TV shows that are bad, you know, they don't get sponsors and uh, the studio loses money on them. So, well, I wouldn't say they lose money on them, but I mean, I suppose it's possible, but there have been shows, you know, they've gone like six episodes and then they just cancel. I had a friend who was on one uh, and it was a show, I believe it was just Justin Bateman was the star, one of the stars about guys who worked in a stadium and uh, my friend was like one of the janitors. He was like the, uh, you know, one of the comedic figures on the show. Could have been a big show. Uh, but I think it went four or five episodes and they just pulled the plug, never to be seen again. And I can't even tell you the name of the show and you'd be hard pressed to find it on YouTube even if I could remember the name. So TV shows can disappear. And there have been some great pilots that never got made uh, do yourself a favor and Google Adam West <laughs> in a pilot, the most amazing pilot you'll ever seen called Look Well. 
Oh, it is the funniest damn show you'll ever watch. Uh, that they didn't pick this show up and make Adam West. If I had been running the studio, I would have picked this show up for a thousand episodes or until Adam West died. It's the most amazing show. It's Adam West playing a guy who played a detective on TV named Look Well, who now is down on his luck and is actually trying to solve mysteries. And he sucks at it, but he just somehow does it anyway. It's great. Uh, there's also another one that uh, was made for the guys, uh, Dan Harmon and those guys who were doing Channel 101 did this great show called They Call Me Co Cobra. Uh, Drew Carey plays an actor who moves out to Hollywood to star in a sitcom that gets canceled before it even starts. He's stuck out there. He has no money for rent. He has no way to get back to where he was living. He has no job. And he keeps getting calls at his apartment for the previous tenant. And they keep asking for Cobra. And Cobra's like this equalizer character who fixes problems. So he keeps blowing off the calls until finally he gets so desperate, he takes the call and takes the job. So imagine the equalizer starring Drew Carey as a guy who like has absolutely no skills. <laughs> and it's great. It is a great show. Uh, so look those two up. And uh, if you're if you're gonna write a show, you know, write the damn thing. Uh, remember that, you know, in a sitcom, uh, it's a page a minute. I mean, it's just like a screenplay. It's a page a minute. Uh, sitcoms are 22 minutes. I think an hour show is only about mm, 48 with the commercials or 43. I forget. Look it up online. I mean, still follows the same basic three act structure. Um, but the stakes will be much lower in a TV show. And you're gonna to wanna to keep things a little bit open uh, so you have some place to take the characters at a later date, okay? So think of it in terms of that. So don't think of it as finishing the whole thing. I mean, the guy should not get the girl. Uh, he should not defeat the bully. It should be like setting things up for the future. I mean, you know, the character, the one-shot characters, they can be dealt with, but uh, you know, the regular cast, they are gonna stick around, so you wanna, you wanna look to the long term. Look, think in terms of a comic book, a serial, a TV show. All right, that's it for screenwriting tips. My name is Tony D. Uh, check me out at Patreon, the Web Comic Factory, and Super Frat. Also, I am at Ocean City Comic Con Saturday and Sunday April 6th and 7th uh, at the Music Pier, I believe it is. Uh, the special guest is going to be Jordy LaForge himself, LeVar Burton. So stop on by. I'm not sure what day he's there. I think Saturday. But check the website, Ocean City Comic Con. I'll see if I remember to put it in the links. And I will see you next time.